What's good, y'all? It's me, Chris. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing Kenya Barris yet again. I feel like my content has been building up to this moment. Just a few weeks ago, I posted a video discussing what I like to see from television in 2021. And in that video, I said that if we're going to be depicting interracial relationships, can they not always involve a white person? Just a week ago, I posted a video of what I had watched recently in television. And in that video, I discussed, wow, interracial relationships involving white people seem to be a common trend, like it's still happening. And now here we are about to have a full feature film about our interracial family. Talk about the evolution of a Pokemon. <laughs> Earlier this week, Disney announced that Zach Braff will be playing the father role opposite Gabrielle Union and the Cheaper by the Dozen remake. This remake will be written and produced by Kenya Barris, will be directed by Gail Lerner. No other casting has been announced and the movie is set to premiere sometime in 2020 on the Disney Plus platform. Now, I am not one to shy away about my disdain that I have for Kenya Barris. That's how some of y'all found me was through my videos about Kenya Barris and his previous production. So you already know what the tone is gonna be for this video. This film was announced in December along with other major projects that Disney revealed that the studio was gonna be working on. And when I saw that it was a remake, I was like, Mm. And I saw it had Gabrielle Union. I was like, ooh. And then I saw that it was Kenya Barris, and I was like, mm. Because I already know what kind of fuck shit Kenya Barris be on. Like, this man has literally made it his business to tell the plight of mixed people. Y'all over here worried about the gay agenda, and this man has been progressing forward with the chocolate vanilla swirl agenda for eight years. Chocolate and vanilla swirl. I have no problem with mixed black people or light-skinned black people stories being told. All marginalized groups deserve to be seen in the media. The differences in our experience are important to be told because it further dismantles any idea that black people are monolithic. It helps widen the scope of blackness and displays the reality of just how vast blackness is. I think within the media and entertainment industry, it's vital to reflect the reality that we currently live in, that there's a true responsibility to depict stories as authentic as the lives that you're drawn from as inspiration. And with Kenya Barris, I do not think that he lives in reality. This man is hell-bent on presenting blackness in proximity to whiteness or through a white gaze. Simply put, this man's productions are for the consumption of white people. I get that when you're a new writer, you're told to write what you know and write what you experience and pull from that. But like, Kenya Bears is not even a biracial person. <laughs> I'd be so confused. He has said in interviews before that he wants to showcase a different image of black culture, but every time he does is with mixed people and light-skinned people. It's never, none of his stories ever center people who look like me. It's like Kenya Bears is too afraid to showcase unambiguous black people in his projects because his show will then seem like too black which is racist like white people don't have the pressure of feeling that a show is too white when it's a predominant white cast black people we watch shows with predominantly white cast all the time and still somehow we find a way to relate to them because you know why because they're human i wish y'all would just start seeing shows with a predominantly black cast as just a human experience another aspect of being human and find something to relate in that because it's the anti-blackness for me. Of course, you're not going to relate to every single aspect of a television show that you watch. Shit, there's black shows that I watch that I can't fully relate to, but there's something done so well about the storytelling and the subject matter that it keeps me engaged. Two really popular shows on HBO are Insecure and How I May Destroy You. And these are prime examples of how you can have a black ass show and still explore different subject matters. There's this reality show on TLC that explores the life of this huge massive black family it's this married straight couple and they had two individual children first followed by twins then quintuplets then twins again and now they are pregnant with triplets that goes for a total of 12 children like look 
The material is right there. We already have an example. I haven't seen this show, but I've seen clips on it. And every time this family comes across my timeline on Twitter, I just smile and look up just like, wow, look how vast this is. Like, look how powerful that would have been to explore 12 uniquely different children on a film with Gabrielle Union leading the pack. Oh my gosh, I would have loved that so much. As told by Kenya has suggested... Fuck Zach Braff, we could have gotten somebody like Sterling K. Brown as our lead. And I thought to myself, wow, that is perfect casting. I didn't couldn't think of anyone else. Could you imagine the power that it would have been to have Gabrielle Union and Sterling K. Brown leading a movie in 2022? Please. And I know we're going to get all light-skinned children because Kenya Bears does not know how genetics works at all. He does not understand that mixed black people come in very different shades and features. I saw a tweet that said the idea of an all black family is considered radical in Hollywood. And I'll even push that tweet a bit further and say that any form of black love is radical. Showcasing black love in any type of form is radical. We live in an anti-black white supremacy society that teaches us whiteness is the standard and that anything closest to black is not seen as of value and worth being loved on. So yes, black love is not progressive, but it's seen as a form of liberation. Kenya Bears, come here. No, I want come close. I want you to hear this. Interracial relationships are not an act of liberation. Dating white people as a dating white people as a black person is not progressive. Like <laughs> I'm sorry. I will never shame anyone that decides to date outside of their race. I understand that where you live and the circles that you frequent can limit your dating pool and shit. White people be attractive sometimes. I get it. But black people dating white people is not a win for the collective. And I am one that believes we should always interrogate and be critical of our attractions to our oppressors. At the bare minimum, I like to see interracial relationships that don't involve white people, like the movie Lovebirds starring Issa Rae and Kumal Nanjani. And not a great movie whatsoever, <laughs> but it was still great to see these two unambiguous dark-skinned people of color lead a movie. For me, self-confidence is twofold. One of it being internal, but the other being a bunch of external forces that has to go with, you know, your friends and your family, people who you are around with, and also the media. The media feeds into how you feel about yourself and the media should reflect your value. At the end of the day, Kenya Bears has way too much power and authority to be out here irresponsibly telling the lives of black people. We don't need corrective promotion. We need authentic promotion because that is what goes the most. Seeing black people being authentically themselves because there is power in just being. But that's all the thoughts that I have for this. I would love to hear what y'all think about it. Please leave it in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the Crispy Noah family and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.